Welcome to this edition of 5 Minutes or Less of EMS. Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of 5 Minutes Less of EMS. I'm your host, Kevin Mackey, coming to you today from Station 20, Sacramento Fire Department in Rio Linda. We're gonna talk about chest trauma today. I brought a mannequin. We're gonna talk about how to use chest seals. We're gonna talk a little bit about pleural decompression and tension pneumothorax. Please join us as we talk about chest trauma. Let's talk briefly about the physiology of tension pneumothorax. Remember with penetrating wounds to the chest, air is gonna enter into a negative pressure environment, which in this case is our chest cavity. As we breathe in, we lower the pressure in the chest, air moves in. It's when the air can't move out of the chest that it creates more pressure inside the chest wall. As that pressure continues to climb, cardiac output drops because the stroke volume drops as cardiac return drops. As you progress through this, tension pneumothorax develops, cardiac collapse develops. Correcting this is extremely important to save this person's life. In Sacramento County, the indications for pleural decompression are penetrating wounds to the chest or to the back with symptoms of severe respiratory distress and or a blood pressure less than 90. So you have to have the mechanism and the indication to do pleural decompression. Now when performing a pleural decompression, make sure that you use a needle that's long enough. Studies have shown that many needles aren't long enough, but fortunately in Sacramento County, we carry needles that are 3.25 inches long, which in the vast majority of patients is more than enough length to penetrate into the pleural cavity. At Sacramento Fire Department, we carry kits called point of wound kits or POW kits. They're located in each of the ambulances, all of the trucks and all the engines, as well as the rescues. Within that pack comes a high fin chest vent seal. That's where I want to spend the rest of the time talking to you about how to use this seal correctly. The packaging has red indicators where to tear. So as you tear one open and you take it out, you'll notice right away that there is gauze right in the middle of it. You're gonna to wanna to save that gauze because you may need to use it. Okay, once you've taken the chest seal out, you've got the gauze in your hand, you're gonna to wanna to use the gauze to wipe away debris or blood from the wound. If there's a lot of debris or blood, you may even need to take a cling or a gauze and wipe it away completely. Next is the hardest part, grabbing the red tab, you pull cleanly to pull away the plastic backing from the seal and prevent it from sticking to itself. Then you apply the seal directly over the wound and then smooth out the edges. It doesn't matter if the red tab is pointed up, left, right, or down. The red tab is just to give you something to pull apart from the plastic backing. You'll notice when you look at the seal that there are channels that run down it. That's to allow the natural burping of pressure from the chest as the pressure begins to build. Okay, that covers chest seals. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks to the men and women of Station 20 for sharing their home with me. We'll see you next time on 5 Minutes or Less of EMS.